Haha, <laughs> that looks really cute. Oh, I love it! Welcome to the Photography Podcast with your host, Mike Cassidy. Hey, how are you, everybody? My name is Mike Cassidy, and I'm a boudoir photographer from New Jersey, and this is my show. What I do is talk with people who are just starting out on their photography voyages, as well as established pros to learn about the hurdles they've had to overcome to get their businesses going. I'm looking to bring you personal stories, which will help you connect to the fact that you're not alone in your struggles. Along the way, we'll probably have a few laughs, but the goal is to get you some actionable advice to help your business grow. So stay tuned. You never know what you may learn. Oh, hello. My name is Michael, and I'm your neighbor. Boy, what a difference a couple of weeks makes, huh? Well, this evening I'm coming to you from my secret underground bunker. This place is stockpiled with toilet paper as high as the eye can see. If you listen, you can hear my cave. All right, enough of that. Let's get back to our regular... Happy, upbeat music. Ah, there we go. Well, the truth of the matter is I'm not located too far from New York City, which is really the epicenter of this mess in the United States, and it's it's quite a situation. New Jersey, where I am, is all shut down. Everybody's been told to stay home, shelter in place, and not too far over in New York City, they're preparing for the worst and cases are still all in the upswing. It's a tough time, man. Let me tell you. The economy has essentially ground to a halt in many industries. This photography industry, too. I know there's a lot of weddings have been forced to cancel. Venues aren't allowed to be open. People can't get together. It's a mess. So the photography business is feeling the effect of this situation, just like everybody else. You know, first and foremost here, I want you to take care of yourself. But um, you may find that suddenly many of you have some free time on your hands. So why not put it to good use and, and make the most out of this situation so when we all get through this, we'll be ready to go and stronger. I was thinking, you know, over the weekend, uh, and I happened to be chatting with uh, with Trevor the other day and mentioned to him if he wanted to come on and do a a show about you know what was going on and he was all for it so we planned this session with with short notice and we started talking today and really the situation kind of diverted into this entire conversation about making a business better now i guess that's what happens when you get a couple of people together who really enjoy what they do it's hard to keep good people down you know we're always thinking of ways improving and how to make this available time useful to improve our businesses. So this was originally going to be the quarantine episode, but the reality is we didn't have that much talk about quarantining. There was a lot of talk about things we'll be doing during this downtime and a lot of other topics. So uh, this episode is deep on photography, nutritional learning. Uh, So when you're tired of watching the family guy on hulu this is a good episode to listen to so grab a pad grab a pencil take some notes you're going to need to give it a listen and uh, most importantly everybody stay safe during this shelter in place and uh hopefully we get through this all in a short time and and back to normal so in the meantime enjoy this episode and talk to you soon Okay, I am with Trevor, and we are on. This is the quarantine show. <laughs> <laughs> we're, all, we're all quarantined. Yeah, this uh, is this is this is how interaction is just going to be from here on in, right? It's just you and me and two webcams. Yeah, so we'll chat for a while, see what sort of comes up. But even before we hit uh, record here, uh, I was talking to to Trevor, but he was talking about how this is reminiscent of the Spanish flu. Um, 
you know, the early part of the, I guess that was like the 1918s, 1920s, sort yeah. of around, uh, around that time. And talk a little bit about, you know, what's going on today since it's such a big topic, this, this virus and how it's spreading and um, outside of the epicenter of uh, everything in here in the United States, outside of New York, you know, New York is essentially shut down. Um, they're turning basically like convention centers into hospitals, uh, you know, and it's just fear, 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 fear. And uh, it's uh, hard to know exactly, too, what's going on because it's, you know, I guess it's so new and it happens so fast and they just want people to be safe and um, stay home. So out in New Jersey here for about since Monday, I'm even losing track of days, the state has been shut down. All businesses have been shut down, You're not allowed to leave except to, to get food um, or gas or, or, you know, or anything like that. You're supposed to sit at home and it, and it makes sense. And and uh, Trevor's out in Toronto, so we'll talk a little bit about his impact. He was just traveling, so maybe we'll talk about some happier things first. Because I saw your <laughs> before we get into the to the to that part of the message. I saw you. What was your? Tra- I saw you in Las Vegas. So what was your? Yeah. So Vegas I desert? I I went uh, I went down to WPPI uh, about I guess four weeks ago, and that was kind of the first bit of this little trip. Um, and then I booked some shoots down there. I was out in death Valley probably eight years ago and, uh, it totally got the better of me because, um, it was just so windy and so impossible to shoot in. I couldn't get any photos of it. Out so, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, this time I got, I went back and I, uh, settled the score, did a, did an amazing, um, uh, salt flat slash sand dune shoot out there and that went really well also did another shoot at uh, uh, some kind of ghost town I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head but did another great shoot they just had a bunch of old like 1950s 60s era cars um, old buildings I mean the guy the guy basically rents it out and I he, he charges like some like, I think it's like five or ten dollars an hour or something like that to use for the photog- location yeah to use the location and w- during wppi this guy's probably making like bang. people want to go out and <laughs> like yeah. it was crawling with with other photographers when i went to scout it the night before the morning after when we did do our shoot uh it was very quiet but oh man that was those were two great locations and then from there i went to costa rica and was living in this little surf town called Santa Teresa, uh, kind of like right on the Pacific coast. And I went there to learn Spanish, um, like primarily. But then I ended up surfing every morning. And uh, well, surfing, if you call surfing falling over, then that's the it's surfing hard. I did. Yeah, yeah it's, it's hard. It's hard to live at a, was a <laughs> surfer at a much younger age. So, but it's fun. It's nice to be outside. Oh, it was great. Yeah, so I did the surfing. Then I do a few hours of Spanish each day. And then uh, I go to yoga uh, at night. And it was fantastic. It was probably one of the best, most chill, relaxing vacations I've ever done. Um, and then I unfortunately had to cut it a bit short uh, by about three or four days uh, trying to get home because... Uh, You know, as I was saying to you earlier off air, like if I hadn't left when I did, I think if I was there another day, I might still be there. Um, So that was that was tough. Um, But uh, because the 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 little beach town, like, I mean, there's not a lot of people there, but, um, you know, it just they slowly started shutting things down like they started shutting down. Oh, even down there. Yeah, they were shutting down the beach parties. They were shutting down the restaurants. And I was just starting to think like, well, if I get stuck here, this is not going to be fun. Um, so let's just get home, uh, pay a little bit to, to book a different flight. And I got back and I've been self-isolation since then, which is about three or four days now. And uh, it's not so bad. I mean, I'm used to working from home, so I'm just doing my thing and make a sure everything. So, yeah, okay. you know, I've had some great friends who, you know, stocked me up before I got back um because they live in the area and so they went and got me groceries and stuff and i basically traded them for toilet paper and it was there great yeah because <laughs> it's funny what becomes valuable little, little little that i know that the super sale they had on toilet paper where i bought like something like 80 rolls was going to come back and help me later there you I, go I just I, I had no idea because it was like four months ago interesting yeah that's funny how things change in in two weeks but what did you see in uh vegas what was going on at the uh 
at the show there because I saw uh, you out in the desert. I mean, I'm jumping around a little yeah, bit. But yeah. I saw your video out in, in the desert too, and some some photos there. But what was the uh, the show like, or what did you see there? Um, I was there mostly with the uh, the Do More Photography Group, um, doing some uh, shoot arounds there. I, I to be honest, I just felt like I was getting stale. I just needed to see how someone else ran a shoot and how how other people interact with models and and, and clients and stuff. And just I just I just needed like an infusion of stuff. Um, I, I think, ideas. yeah, like I think as photographers, we're, we're kind of like, you know, we live in isolation a little bit too much and we, we, we kind of, cause we do our own thing. I mean, you might have a studio manager or an assistant or something that kind of gives you a little insight, but generally speaking, we're all catty to each other for some unknown reason that I can't understand. Mm. Um, and we, we just, we kind of like, just don't, share as much uh, as we probably should and uh it's nice to go somewhere and just talk to other people and and just yammer on about any number of things and just sit down have some good discussions and and you you leave feeling inspired um i i walked around the show floor i think for all of maybe 45 minutes so it was more for the people that yeah. you're going and oh, the, for the for the display trust, trust me i have worked Far yeah, I have too no many sh- trade shows yeah. to ever want to go into one of those and see anything. Like, everything's available online. You know, if somebody makes a new g- gadget gizmo or something like that, there's already, like, a Kickstarter video you can watch. There's, like, somebody has already made a video. Why do I need to go touch it? I, I Like, and then, you know, you got all these camera booths. Like, it's a lens. <laughs> you know, like... If it suits your needs, buy it. I, I don't need to touch it. I, yeah, I wonder know. if that's a bit of an anachronism in, in that respect in those shows. You're right that people know about things, and if they're interested, it's on blogs, it's on websites, yeah. it's on it's on YouTube. Yeah, I, it's just not my thing. I mean, I'm jaded to it. Um, I obviously worked in the photo industry for ten plus years. Well, twelve or thirteen plus years, both in the retail side and the distribution side. So I kind of. Like all this stuff is like, okay, uh, if I need uh, a 135 F2, I'm just going to go buy a 135 F2. Like it doesn't like, okay, whether it's the Zeiss, the Fuji or the what, whoever, like I I don't care. It just read a few reviews online, uh, look at a few images and like if I hate it, I'll return it. Yeah, like I, I just, oh, trade shows, just like just tripping over all those people in there, just seems so. Yeah, uh, I was. I'm. I've never. I've never been to a photography one, but I have been to plenty uh, in the past too, and uh, I have no. Again, yeah, interest in going booth to booth and talking with people, saying the same thing eighty for the eighty fifth time in yeah. that day, and, and explaining something. But I guess some people like it, but that's not my thing. Yeah, go for the no. learning. I mean, WPPI Either. is a fantastic learning. Uh, opportunity and I went to um, oh my god I think it was Rich Harrington's uh, uh, presentation it was like kind of a full day thing on video production and although some of it like was total review for me I I could see like some people are like frame rates what Um, like some stuff is review but then the other production side of things I was like oh oh yeah like let's put it together like that and and just like just little snippets of ideas that lead to bigger ideas um, are what make those those things worth going to. And, um, yeah, I, I definitely left feeling very inspired and uh, took a whole bunch of ideas with me. And I just I wrote them down kind of on my iPad and went, OK, I'm going to stash these. I am not working on my vacation. And then you'll put them together now in quarantine. And now I now I have all this time in quarantine all, to do all, the all sorts of things like. Um, well, like when I when I came back, I was scheduled to have an open house at my studio. Uh, I guess the, it would have been this coming Saturday, but uh, I canceled that about a week ago, realizing like, yeah, the, the, this is not a good idea to even try to run this or anything like that because it would have been obviously canceled based on current guidelines. But um, you know. I had some time, and I still have lots of time, and I presume there's going to be even more time. More time. Um, because um, I think the reality is, is this isn't going to end by the beginning of April. Um, like any kind of, any kind of like getting back to normal doesn't just like okay tomorrow everybody go do your thing. Like this has to be like a phased roll in. And uh, I don't know what that looks like. That's that's I think the thing that's keeping yeah. me up at night. 
It's all going to be new to us, too. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to let you know how this all shakes down because we'll probably be a week or two ahead or whatever happens here is going to roll out that way. Yeah. I mean, the good news, I think, is, is that, you know, when you look at uh, areas of China, which were hard hit in Italy, you're starting to see a decline in cases because the quarantines are starting to take effect. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's. So, so like it's it's starting to get better and once you have enough like once you can control all the cases then all of a sudden things start getting more normal um it's, it's just like you you don't have outbreak situations so uh yeah because i mean i know even one of my makeup artists is like yeah i i, I gotta be really careful about who who i like what work i accept because like my parents are older and uh i don't want to infect them um situation yeah exactly like my parents are not young by any stretch i mean i i say they're old as you know what but that's just joking and but now it's like actually a serious thing so i haven't seen them because they were in florida for like three weeks before i left and so i haven't seen them in almost two and a half months which is kind of weird and uh yeah i mean we're facetiming and stuff which is great uh not quite the same um, also even just like really good friends, you know, like friends that I just, you know, I just enjoy physically being present. We don't even have to talk just being just in their being presence around. because they're, they're so close to me. Um, it, it's, uh, it's hard not being around and just FaceTiming and that's it. So who knows? Things are changing. Yep. I, I think, uh, just going to go back and talk about what you were talking about, getting new ideas from from people and i think you are a thousand percent right is people work very independently and alone as photographers and then you know it's good to have talk to other people get other ideas and and you know i've always done things this way and then you you wow maybe i'll try this or maybe Mm -hmm. i'll try that so i think that is one thing that is great because you're right you can get stale i think you do the same thing over and over and face it you're not reinventing the wheel every time you go in with with uh somebody and I think it can lead to a little bit of, I don't want to say boredom, but, uh, you know, doing the same thing over and over and over again. Is there anything that you try to do to, to freshen your routine a little bit or, or you pretty much get, you know, just constantly looking for new ideas or keeping it the same? Yeah, I, I think I'm always looking for new ideas. Um, I'm constantly on, you know, Pinterest and just... It's almost like, uh, I mean, with, with boudoir posing, there's really, there's really only four positions you can have someone, right? You can have someone sitting, standing, laying down, or kneeling, right? But how can you take any of those four and do something different with it? Um, so, I mean, I, I know I have my money shots that will always sell, and that's fine. I mean, I could just shoot those from now until the end of time, and... I'd probably be okay. I just find my it very boring to do it. So, so for personal reasons, personal growth. Yeah. Keep on um, just learning. just keep on learning. And I mean, it's just uh, I think my biggest the thing I really started looking at probably about a year and a half ago was really exploring direction of light. Um, like I, I've always been a backlight side light. I love this kind of look type thing. Um, I've never been into the very bright, airy boudoir, which is just light everywhere. But, you know, just just turning people around um, in in the studio to to get that shot was a big thing. And I mean, my biggest problem was, you know, if I was using window, like if I'm using a strobe, it's kind of easy. You just swing the strobe around. But if I was using window light or a combination thereof, it was tough because you shoot the wrong way. And now you're getting all the crap in the back of your studio that you don't want. So, so I built this giant rolling wall. It's like about two and a half feet wide. Um, I store all my V-flats in it. It's about 10 feet wide and about eight and a half, nine feet tall. Um, so it just rolls around. So I just I just place that in behind. So now I have a wall that I can Temporary effectively wall. make a room out of. So you can get some new angles. Yeah. So, so like I started shooting a lot more direct, like broader lit directional stuff. And that was kind of my first my first thing and then and then after that it started to be like okay well what how could i how could i light a certain pose like i i and i i mean slend more slender bodies are obviously easier to to shoot because you can sometimes do more with them mm. but i was really focusing on um curvier body types like how can i do a pose like that with someone 
who who is you know like to logically speaking you're always thinking like somebody who's a little bigger you're trying to elongate them not crunch mm -hmm. them in but like yeah. how can i do that and like use a hand to 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 cover something up just so i can get a more of a more of a variety of poses and and looks and and just using selective crops to to get what i want um so like that challenge to myself to to work with every body type is has always been there but um yeah just just really striving for different fresh angles ideas. of light just fresh ideas just and also like the communication like one of the uh the, the workshops i attended was um like they the way that they worked with um, individuals was like very different for me. Um, it was, it was more about that kind of almost connection with yourself to, and, and they were almost doing the shoot more like a therapy session. Yeah. Uh, it, I, it, as soon as yeah. I hear that, my back starts to cringe and yeah. so, but I'll let you continue on this. Yeah, no, it's, it's, there was, there were parts of it that I went, Hmm, not for me, but then I went, Hmm. The, like there's little there's little bits and pieces you can kind of cherry pick out of it that that you go interesting because I've always felt that boudoir it like and I've always said I am a therapist with a camera um, whether I like it or not um, people get out of this body acceptance like that's what that's what we do and I mean a lot of people live with the shame of them not looking like what they see in all the magazines. So, so there is an element to that. I've never really like said, okay, like I'm a therapist with a camera. I've joked about it a couple of times, but never went that way. But then they, but the way they, the way they coached the, the, the person through some of the poses was like interesting. It's like, you know, just, just touch those legs. Like, you know, they're perfectly imperfect. Like just little things like that. I'm not sure I could say it, it doesn't necessarily feel genuine for me yet because I don't, I haven't explored it, but um, it was interesting. And it was, I felt that um, like done correctly, it could be really empowering for someone. And I, and that's, that's the beauty of photography, right? Like to, no two photographers are ever going to be the same. Right. You and I, despite looking very similar, you know, um, we could, we could very, we, we could take, work we, with we, people we could work with, right. you know, you could record a session with you and, and a model and me and a model, same location, same model. And you'd look at the two interactions and the two, um, the, the two shoots from a behind the scenes kind of standpoint. And it's completely different. And, yeah, and, and so that's the, the work, I think, it. reflects, the work reflects, I think, in, in essence, the photographer's personality to yeah. an extent. So it is a reflection, and that's why things things can be different in that range. The one thing that always has me a little bit weary, like I said, my spine just cringes as soon as I hear that touchy feely um, kind of a stuff. Because you're right, and you know, in this day and age, you're not allowed. There's certain things you're not allowed to talk about anymore. But uh, it seemed like you know, I don't know, 2011, 12 ish, eight, seven years ago. There's a lot of people that pushed all their chips in on this empowerment movement that was in photography and they think they were trying to make it something or add another layer to it. Um, and it doesn't always work in that way. You know, I've worked with, with tons and tons of people and, you know, it is a great experience for people to come in. They walk out really feeling energized and having a great time. But at the same time, I'm not thinking I'm some, you know, spiritual Sherpa that's there to, <laughs> you know, provide life coaching to to somebody. And, and and I had never buddy, no one ever came to me and sat down with me and they were like, Michael, you know, we need to change my life. It just it was a fun activity, but I wouldn't go as far as saying that on that level, I was advertising or wanted to be seen as someone who is changing somebody's life. So I was very mm -hmm. wary to go down yeah, I agree. Like, I, I know I fall somewhere in the probably in the middle there, um, because I, I, I mean, I, I definitely don't feel I fit in the like the category of like I don't know um, whimsical empowerment and yeah. or whatever the term. I don't I don't know how to verbalize that because um, it, it it doesn't. I I personally don't feel it's 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 genuine as a, as a guy like that coming from me. I, I mean, like I, I, it could, I guess, but 
it doesn't, I, I basically tell my clients like, Hey, listen, do this for you because you're worth it. And you get out of it. What you, what you want. Some people it's more transformative than others. Some people it's, it's more of just like an accelerating rush. Um, but I guess I don't try to pinpoint one way or the other. Like they have to do, they have to feel a certain way about it. Yeah. Um, you don't know what's going on with somebody no. else's life. And I don't no. feel it's my business to really to like sit down and have a personal coaching session mm-hmm. with someone. So how would I know if someone is how they feel on the inside and, and you know, it's not part of, of my uh my job. I assume everyone's fine. That's coming to see me. And they're just a little bit like yeah. a roller coaster yeah, ride. Like, you know what I mean? I, I definitely but. get the information from them by both talking to them at the uh, the, the pre shoot wardrobe consult, which I do, mm-hmm. um, but also just from the questionnaire that I that I ask them. Like just just simple questions. Like you could just kind of interpret and read between the lines a little bit. Like I don't ever ask like what's your least favorite part of your body. That was never yeah. that would never be a, a part of this. But like the why are you doing it? Um, usually gives me quite a lot of insight into into like some other stuff related to body issues. And I mean, a lot of my clients, I, I'm going to say like 80% of my clients are probably moms, probably 35 and, and up. Um, uh, and they've, they, they, they struggle with the idea that they have to look like they did when they were 20. And, um, you know, it, it's nice being able to change that. And make them go, holy crap, I'm actually like a total knockout. Wow. Okay, cool. And you give them that confidence boost. And that's that's kind of where I'm at with the with that scope of things, I, I guess. But uh, yeah, it's it's different how everybody shoots for sure. Yeah, there's and levels. I love it. And it's it's for some people that may be fine. You know, there may be and then you know, there used to be websites and everything was, you know, change your life and all these quotes that people would use. And I guess if that fits you as a person and you're really looking to, to cry and weep with people when they when they come in and go through this giant emotional experience, if that works for you, I think that's great. I know that wouldn't be genuine to me. And I know like I hear from you, I don't, it doesn't sound like you do the same thing, but everybody has their way, I think, of of finding their own uh their own path but i think i was more on their resist not resistant isn't the right word but not i didn't it didn't go in that uh, direction and i think a lot of these people have fallen by the wayside i think because you know their work wasn't so great and i think after all you know no matter how much preachy emotional stuff you go in people are going to get pictures and if the pictures don't look good what is you know what is everything else for yeah i mean that's then um, that's of course so subjective too right like i mean what right. is a, what is a great picture to yeah. somebody i mean sometimes it's just that connection right like it doesn't have to be technically superb it just has to create a resonance with someone and that's why people vibe with other people i guess and that's um, that's kind of one of the more interesting aspects of, of, uh, I guess being a photographer and how you market yourself. Like you really have to be genuinely you, um, because if you're trying to be someone else, uh, especially like if your website kind of like doesn't really reflect your own personality and stuff, like people kind of pick up on that and it doesn't, it doesn't always work and it just feels odd. Um, cause you see a lot of sites that are just kind of recycled material, material um, yeah. like when you're newer, you're, you're kind of like struggling to put stuff together. So you, you half plagiarize something and I, like, I've seen it cause I've, I've had people copy stuff off of my site and I'm going yeah, like, yeah, I yeah, found yeah. identical copies of my websites. Yeah. Online, <laughs> see, like, I, I really have. I, and I, to be honest, I, I, it's only cause a client pointed it out to me. I could never go out and search this kind of stuff. Cause I just, I frankly just don't care. Um, like if you want to rip it off, like that's your prerogative. I mean, I'd hope that you'd stop doing it, but, um, at the same time, you know, it's also not genuine to your to you. business. Um, cause if you're trying to emulate my business and you're not me, that's not, that's not going to work for you in the long run. I agree. I, I agree. And I think people struggle at first. And, uh, one thing with, uh, maybe it's even photography in general. We're talking about what we do in, in specific, but when people wake up one day, whatever it is, that idea that they decide I'm suddenly become a women's uh, photographer, you know, they go on Amazon and, and buy their camera and they go on Wix or Squarespace and start, and start a website. And suddenly they think they're a pro and that really doesn't work in, in that matter. And I've 
repeated this before and I've, I've talked to people and I said, well, what if you just woke up and decided you want to be Eddie Van Halen one morning and you run down to the guitar center and you go in and tell the guy, I want the same Eddie Van Halen model and you race home. doesn't mean you're a professional guitar player. No. It doesn't mean that suddenly bands are going to start contacting you and the next thing you're on the road with a summer tour and, and, and so forth. But it's a long, long, long road. You're practicing for years and you don't learn overnight. And, and uh, I think that's the same way that sort of photography goes, but somehow people see it as the opposite, that they can just buy that camera, create that website, deem themselves a pro, and suddenly people should be flooding to them just because they say they're, they're here. And uh, you're right, they, it's, it's, it's more complicated than that. And I think people do struggle at first. They don't. They don't have. They don't have a message. They don't know what they are yet in terms of photography. That's something that evolves over time to sort of create your cult, just like you would create a style playing a guitar. You know, at first you may get books or copy people online, but that's not really you. I guess that's the you know you learn in, in the way that you you learn. But it takes a really a long time to find your own rhythm and get your own style and, and your own message. And I think people just grasp at first. They say, well, this person's doing this and this person's doing this, so I should do it too. And they, mm -hmm. this day, it's so easy to copy other people's ideas. So they just amalgamate all this stuff and put it on their website because they see everybody else doing it. So I think that's why we're part of that, uh, um, where part of that comes from. And hopefully over time, if you put in the time and the energy, you start to figure that's not really me. And you can start to adjust those things a little bit, but I need, I guess you need a place somewhere. Um, yeah, you, you absolutely to have to start somewhere. Um, and I mean, I remember when I first started out, uh, it was, you know, I, I guess, I guess just due to my own personal nature, I, I mean, I was kind of insular. I didn't want to look like anybody else. Um, so that was a little different. And I didn't subscribe to all the cookie cutter uh, packages that were out there um, because there's a lot of people offering training right now. Um, oh, it's too many and people. It's, uh -huh. And it's, it's, it, it kind of clouds you. And, and I mean, everybody's trying to hustle it and everybody, like there's probably one or two good ones and like 15 bad ones um, mm -hmm. that are just like, yeah, well, if you offer a bunch of free model call type sessions, um, you'll get a bunch of clients and you'll make some money right off the bat, but that's not a sustainable business model. No. Um, and they're not really teaching you that. And then, you know, God forbid, they're like, okay, well, you've done this. Well, guess what? There's part two now. And then that's yeah. even more money. And it's more of a money suck than yeah, it, it, people. It, it's kind of like I equate it to the gold rush. And by, by that, I mean that um, during the gold rush and in, in, in whether it be the California, Yukon, wherever, um, the people who got rich weren't the miners. It was the people supplying the miners. So you'd have a, a miner go out there and they'd kind of like start buying land claims and start doing their thing and digging through the dirt and they'd find some gold. But then there'd be people to basically extract that gold from them at the, in, in town, whether it be like the person who's going to sell you all the pickaxes and shovels, the, the prostitutes, the bars, the whoever, right? Like it, it, they're the ones who are legitimately getting rich, not the minor and it's it's kind of the same in photography so i always caution people with who you are going to interact with with some of these um sales programs because they all seem yeah. to promise a lot and i've i've done yeah. a bunch of them and there's been some great ideas with some of them but at the, some at the same time like um you, you really do have to be careful because it can be a quite a money pit if if uh if not really carefully considered I agree with you. And there's been an explosion over the past couple of years of training courses and people selling and not so much of the digital products. I get it. So you make a bunch of Lightroom presets and you want to save something like that or sell something like that. And that's fine. What always has me scratching my head is exactly what you said, is that everybody's an expert now. Mm -hmm. Everybody is a trainer. Everybody is like a mentor. And I don't know if that's something for twenty nine ninety five. You can purchase. What does that say about someone's wealth of information that they've that they've well, built up? Over I'll the tell year? you, half the time those aren't twenty nine ninety five. Like, well, two thousand nine hundred ninety ninety five. Well, yeah, you well, know, like they like they're not. They're, like a lot of those are really not inexpensive. So, 
um, be very careful with who you're putting your money with. And if they're at all secretive about what their process is or how they're going to interact with you and, and stuff like that, just run away. Because like a lot of times there's just, there's, there's like this, there's like this wall of, of like, they, they have this information and it's actually very limited, but they, if they just told you what they were going to do for you, um, you'd be like, well, wait, 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 I'm already doing that. Like, you're just, you're just going to run like an extra Facebook ad and what? Like, so you got to be slightly wary of that. And that's one thing I'd always caution new photographers on is just, there's no simple, there's no, there's no no cookie cutter way of doing this. You, you, you have to like slog it out and you'll be doing this for five to eight years before you see real tangible, sustainable money. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and you sometimes like if you're going to spend $4,000 on some training thing, just imagine what $4,000 does for you and in, in basically adds an awareness. Um, there's there's a lot of there's a lot better places you can sometimes put your money. But if you if you really need that push, maybe research them and find the right one. But uh, I'm sure there are good solid see my first my first thought on this is that if i were starting and i needed a mentor or i needed to go in in what we do especially Mm -hmm. i would thinking it would have to be a one-on-one thing you know i would want to be with somebody because i despite what you you can learn i guess some basics online but to actually be with somebody and to walk through that and you can learn it by actually being there and seeing what somebody's doing and i think it's an in-person thing would be the most valuable way to uh, to do that, I think the most wary I'd be is any kind of, you see, that it's the bottom line as they're talking about money. Be booked all the time or how I made nonstop, mm-hmm. you know, when, when they're focusing on the money thing, those are the ones I'd be the most wary of. Yeah. And the truth probably lies somewhere, you know, in, in the middle there, because I don't think it's for what I always, I thought about that too. And I was talking to somebody about that, like if, I have no interest in really doing this at this point, but if, if people were to contact me and said, boy, I'd want to learn and I wouldn't even, I would have to really consider how I would even charge somebody because what is your, what is that worth to you? What is your collective information that you've built up throughout these years? And it, could it be 10 grand? Could it be 20 grand? Yeah. And then, but I mean, know. a lot of people are literally looking for like, okay, where's my turnkey solution? Where's my, it doesn't work. you know, yeah. like how do, how do you, you're, you're successful right now. How do I, basically take your template and just apply it to me. And, um, you know, having, I, 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 I hate sounding like this guy, but like I, I have a background in instructional design and so many of these things like are designed so poorly from a learning perspective. They're, um, they're like, you kind of have to interpret stuff, put your own pieces together and, and like, it's not necessarily like a one-on-one thing. Usually it's just like, here, we're going to have a group call. You can ask some questions and they're, they're very hands off. You're right that a one-on-one is inevitably better. Um, but it, it almost needs to be very specific. Like if somebody, like I, I used to do some mentoring here and there a few years ago, and then I just stopped because it was just too much of a time suck. But, um, you know, like I, I've had new photographers come to me asking to, to mentor. And I just, I'd say, well, where are you at with your business? And they say, well, I'm just starting out. I say, okay, well, the discussion's over. I'm not, I'm not interested. And they're like, why not? I'm like, I, I, cause I was like, I can't get you from zero to a hundred in three months. Like that does, that just doesn't happen. Um, you have to, like, I, I'd work with someone who is an established business who's been around for a while and who wants specific help with Facebook ads or specific help with um, like a website audit or, or like a systems integration thing. But you know, for, for you saying like, Oh, I got nothing. Help me. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. And I agree with you. And that's funny. And what I remember saying when I was talking to this person about this, uh, this mentoring and, and I would say, you know, how can you, and, and the, the, you're right. There would have to be some kind of an evaluation process. 
why would you just take anybody in? It, I would, I would, I, the, my, I think I, my words would be, it, I would be like the Harvard of boudoir. You don't just take anybody. Mm-hmm. I would have to sit down and talk to this person. I would always take the people that I can see are doing excellent right now that needed to move themselves to like sort of a different level. What would be the point in investing all your time and energy in someone who just doesn't have you know, what it takes? And that's kind of mean to say yeah. or, or, or something like no, that. But. Well, a lot of people have a lot of really gifted talent as photographers. Um, I mean, uh, I think you can make it as a photographer having limited photography skills and great marketing skills uh, versus the other way around. Um, uh, like I, there, there are definitely, there's definitely one person who operates in and around the, the Toronto area who I just look at and I go, man, like these images are just, they're okay, but they're just really blah. And I mean, she charges next to nothing. And it's like, and I go, but you know what? I'm okay with that because those aren't my customers, right? Like, I don't want the person who only wants to spend $400. Like, I, I, I would drive myself crazy shooting all day long, every day, um, for no amount of money. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, what, I, what I do applaud her on is being fantastically amazing at marketing herself. Um, themed photo shoots and and uh, really active Facebook community and, and stuff like that. Like, that's good on you. Like, that's, like, I, I, as I say, I don't, I don't begrudge any photographer for having more or less skills than I do. Um, but do they create something that somebody likes and somebody will buy? If the answer is yes, then they're probably going to be successful. Um, and we can gauge each other on artistic merit if we want, but, you know, this isn't a photo competition, it's business. So who's the better business person at the end of the day? That's who wins. Yeah, and you're right. You don't have to be the world's best photographer to have, to be successful. And I guess that comes down to someone's definition of success mm-hmm. um, as well. And I was always under the impression, or this is the way that I operated, that you wanted to be the best or you were never satisfied that you mm-hmm. would look at every session that you did and say oh I screwed this up and oh I screwed this up and and always making these mental notes over the years and moving forward and trying to be the best that you could be and that was you know, that's how this all comes differently and that was my thought that that was the, the the foundation needed to be there you need to be solid at those fundamentals because when you're with somebody in a session you know, there's so many other things going on, like you were talking about directing a person and doing this. You don't want to be fumbling with your camera and worry what you're doing there. You need to have that part down pat so you can conduct everything else that's going on in that session and dealing with the person and not having to worry about, you know, setting cameras and, and not getting and not getting the photos. You know, the marketing is a whole nother thing. And that's a function of right education. Now you can learn that online yep. and money and the more you invest, to, you're going to start to get that back. And I think, um, I don't know about you, but my marketing goes up, up, up and up in every single year. I spend a small fortune on, uh, on marketing. At this point, I've learned a little bit. I know what I'm going to get back from that. And, um, you know, that so many people are only going to come and randomly stumble across you. There's only going to be so many people that are friends of friends. But that avenue opens those doors to people who may not have otherwise found you. And you can certainly get in the face of as many people as you want to, and you're going to get a certain return on that done done, done properly. Uh, so marketing, I think, is something that is completely overlooked for a lot of people. Yeah. Are starting and they don't have the budget to do it, and they don't have the, the skills to do it either. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that old adage of, you know, you have to spend money to make money is, is so true. As a photographer, I, I couldn't think of a more true statement that I could make or piece of advice I could give to any new photographer. Like if you're if if somewhere between 10 and 25 percent of your of every dollar you make is not being put back into some kind of marketing, whether it be going to smaller trade shows or Facebook, Instagram ads or uh, pick something else if you want. But um, you're, you're not, you're, you're right. You're, you're only going to reach so many people cause you have to, you, what I guess my goal has always been is I want to attract one new person and have them tell two of their friends and have those two friends come in. But I keep needing new people because eventually you run out of a friend group and there's just no more. Um, and that's, that's where it really comes in. And, and, you know, your point earlier of where you said, you know, you're striving to, 
refine your photography craft after every shoot and look at, um, you know, what did I screw up? What did I do right? And, and all that kind of stuff. I've always tried to do that with the marketing side of things. You know, like what is working? What is not? How could I like what if I spent a little bit more? What would happen? What are what are the Google Analytics on my site look like? You know, like setting up conversions and click funnels and and all this kind of stuff to direct people to ultimately booking with me. Um, like that's those are the things that really make you as a photographer, um, not so much the what aperture did you use? Right. And it's not something just specific to what we do. That's just marketing in general. Mm-hmm. Um, a whole nother discipline that you have to learn yeah. how to do that. And it is tricky. And if you don't know it, get on to Fiverr and find someone who knows, right? <laughs> like there's, there's no shame in saying, I don't know how to do something. Um, I don't know how to do accounting. I can do basic bookkeeping, but when it comes to accounting, I'd rather stab my brain with a Q-tip. It, it just, it's not my fun thing to do. So I pay somebody to do that for me. Um, just as retouching, I can do it. I don't want to do it. So therefore I outsource that. Um, and anything that's like really high end that I would only entrust by me, then I do it. Right. But, um, otherwise, you know, just, just understand what your weaknesses are and work around them. Um, obviously you can't, if you're super weak at photography, you can't outsource that, but you know, you, you can definitely outsource probably 80% of what a photographer does on their day to day basis and find someone who can help you with that. Um, but looking for the turnkey solution isn't necessarily the best way to do it. Uh, there are usually independent contractors, which will probably be a better solution for you and probably more cost effective too. And there's your one-on-one, right? Like if you're looking for marketing help and setting up Google AdWord, a Google AdWord campaign, it's probably better to find someone who specializes in that rather than trying to just do it all yourself. Because we are, as as we said before, we're, we're people who are photographers are people who um, very much like to do everything themselves. They love to be control freaks and get, and, and I mean, I come from a managing teams background and I love going here, somebody else do this, not me. <laughs> like it's, it's, uh, it, it, if you can learn that lesson, you can really make yourself uh, a, a really, you know, very successful, I think. Yeah. So if you were starting today, let's say, you woke up this morning as that person who decided it is your goal to make women beautiful, really didn't know anything about photography. My hunch is you go to the Google machine or to YouTube and start watching some videos. But you think personally, where would you start? What do you th- think would be think, the most important thing to learn? I think like before I started outsourcing, I'd be I'd be at a level where I've got a bunch of clients. I'm not, I'm not anywhere near booked solid at this point, but I, um, I realized that like, it's an awareness thing. Like I'm not getting clients because I just don't have awareness. And for most people, Facebook, the Facebook, um, uh, ad network kind of thing is daunting. Like, what type of ad do I set up? Oh my God, I'm presented with eight options right to start. And then it's like, very arcane. It, it, it is, it is very difficult to learn. And I mean, I'm, I, I, I have a, I don't know, an intermediate at best knowledge of it. And I could probably set up my own things, but to set up, you know, like chat bots and, and whatnot like that, like at, at a certain point I'd start going, okay, well, if I said, I'm going to, like, when you get to a certain size, you say, okay, now I have to start putting money aside. Like, I can't just be like, I I do a session, I make uh, a $1,000 profit off of it after all my expenses are paid, and that $1,000 instantly gets paid to me. Now I have to take that $1,000 and I have to take a portion of that and put that into like a little bit of a squirrel fund and just put that away separately. And once you've built up enough of that, say like anywhere between a thousand and two thousand dollars, now you start going, okay, what do I want to do first? Do I want to do like a, a chatbot? Do I want to do Facebook ads? Do I want to do Instagram ads, which are sort of the same thing? Or do I want to, or do I want to do Google ads? Like what what do I want to do when you pick one and you say, okay, well, 
I I'm and you you set yourself a budget and you say like okay what what do I want to spend per month and spending a hundred dollars a month is in reality nothing um, so you know like could I sustain five hundred dollars a month in Google Ads or five hundred dollars a month in something else what is it going to return for me how many extra clients is this going to generate for me how can I track this and those are questions that an outsourced person can answer for you and there are so many you know we if you just simply get onto google and you go like facebook ad specialist all you find is big corporate entities working with you know companies. huge companies and that's not who you want you want to go search on th- places like fiverr or uh, I, I'm, I'm totally blanking on the other job sites, other, but job like you know like gig sites, sites yeah. right like they're really skilled people they may not be the best of the best but all you need to do is just have somebody who's going to look out for your best interest and try to help you grow and if you are very clear about the what it is you want to achieve and you, what your objectives are like if your objective is to get eyes on your site and then retarget those people and then get them onto specific landing pages um, and then eventually get them through a booking thing or get them to sign up to your e-newsletter list and stuff, then if you're clear about what those objectives are, that's great. Um, and if the person on the other end is just like, well, I don't know what to do. I can just set up a, a Facebook ad for you. Um, probably the wrong person. You want somebody who maybe can guide you a little bit um, and help you out. But there's some really qualified people on these these gig sites that really know their stuff and they, they they're what they do is they just manage multiple people at a time and that's how they make their money and it's kind of passive income because they just have to kind of do stuff as as required um i mean i wouldn't be signing on to somebody who's like uh, you're gonna pay me like x number of dollars a month unless i knew what they were doing because i am not just gonna like light money on fire and just give it to them hand it out you know but you just have to find the solution that works for you. But once you get to that certain size of business where you're like, okay, I think I want to do this. Marketing is just the next step and putting money towards that is important. And you know, if you can do that, man, that's, that's great. Just don't think you can do it all for free with a private Facebook group and, and stuff like that. Those are great tools, but they're not the end all solution. Cause you know, if Facebook takes that away from you, you're, you're kind of screwed. And let's face it, Facebook does not like us boudoir photographers. No, everything's being hidden. And I think the the piece of advice I would give to somebody when it comes to marketing is marketing is like one of those healthy habits. Like if you were to start exercising, people, you know, they do five push-ups. If you do go to the gym one time, you're not going to see results. Uh, you can't like run an ad for a week and expect your your life to change. Mm-hmm. Like exercise, it takes how long? A year, six months before you start to notice any difference in yourself or get stronger. You know, and you just got to keep doing it. I think that is something in in that same way. There isn't necessarily an immediate return because it takes a while for people to see you, and they need to see you a couple times, and then they may check your website, and they may come back two or three times before they even they even contact you. But it's a long-term thing. It's not you spend 500 and you expect to get that back and then some immediately. It, it, it's a long investment, I think, with not a lot of visible return at first. And then it's slowly as you start to figure it out. And what I wonder, too, and I never investigated this, there's got to be some really small niche, like mom and pop or single person type marketing agencies that I'm, work just with I'm photographers sure there out there somewhere. Um, uh, I mean... That that but that's why I think the gig thing is so good because they could be a smaller operation and that's just how they market themselves. Um, Someone who just does that. Yes, yeah. I think the targeting is important and and not getting too deep into this, but you know it could be so granular with Facebook oh. or with Google. You could target just people who just got engaged. Yeah, you want bridal. That was actually one of the things that I that I walked away from a WPPI with, like as far as an idea goes, is just like marketing to very specific groups of people like not just brides like that's hyper competitive but but other things like like people who like a very specific thing that ties in with 
with boudoir and then like you know like could be divorcees it, it could be it could be anything but just making like that specific landing page that speaks directly to them that you can target through facebook because those of you that have never used the uh, facebook like audience planner thing i don't even think that's the right term for it but where you can basically like put up characteristics and then save that as a profile for someone it is scary how granular yeah, the custom yeah. audiences it is scary how granular that is and i like yeah like it's it, facebook's a great marketing tool because we all just gave facebook all of our information Everything and i mean that that audience tool is basically what cambridge analytica used against right us, and you right? can use it well, in and, and your sense, you can target, like I said, moms or, you know, 35 to, to 30 to 35 getting engaged within the next year or getting anniver- married or severing an anniversary within the next mm-hmm. year within a certain area around you. And you can send out the, the ads to these people so you can be super granular. And it takes a little bit of seeing what works for you again. And uh, you could target exactly the people that you want. Yeah. To like you. But you like that's so. that's the other thing that most new photographers don't understand. They're just like, okay, well, I'll photograph anyone for no amount of money, and uh, they've never figured out who their actual target audience is. Like when you start out, you're just like free sessions. And, well, I think that's okay, and that's fine. There's nothing when you're first yeah, starting. When you're first starting, it's just when in long term, when you're when you're offering a three hundred dollar session with all the digital images, like what are you doing? You're never going to make any money. You will be spinning your wheels and you're like, okay, cool. I'm shooting all these people. Look at all, look at what I'm doing. And then when you have to raise your prices, like all the people who said you're great and you're, you're super affordable, those people no longer want to deal with you. And you're like, ah, crap. Now I have no customers, right? Like just, I, when I started out, I did not do the, uh, like the free stuff or the inexpensive stuff. I kind of looked at my market in the area and figured out like where the, 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 the pricing was at and I priced myself like 90% of what the top people were priced at because I just didn't want to be the bottom feeder. Um, and, uh, it worked out pretty good for me because I ended up with like a pretty good client base and they've always recognized me as not the cheapest, but one of the best. So, and that's positioning yourself mm-hmm. too. And, and you know, the price is only one part of the overall cost and this goes down another whole <laughs> avenue. Um, of of how that to, to structure that one but when people are first starting i think they're just super excited and the first time somebody contacts them and they're like me you want me <laughs> right. to take your, your your picture so you're going to do it and it's it's funny because i'm on you can't see my smartphone i have my smartphone i i have doing a little bit of an experiment like i had done maybe five six seven eight years ago where i downloaded a time app i don't even know what you call it it's like it tracks your your job time so I was curious, like how much time I invested with with any one person, mm. and I forget what I. It was like a, several years ago, and every time you talk to them or email them, or when you're in the session, or remarkably when you're working on their photos afterward, you could start and stop this job timer um, to see your total time that you put into one session, and then you can use that amount of time and divide it by what you got from them, and the result is that you'll kind of be shocked to see. <laughs> you know how much time versus what you're charging somebody you're like it was like uh, what was that movie two dollars an hour yeah or, or an hour. no i think and, uh, i think that that exercise is so valuable for so many different genres of photography especially wedding photographers you know like if you're charging less than about four or five thousand dollars for a wedding are you nuts because like by the time you put in all the effort and the production and the editing and the meetings and the back and forth like Man, that hourly rate looks pretty scary. It's just you, you, you see that big ticket sale and you think you're make you're you're like gonna be a millionaire and it's not always the case. You look over the time. And that's because I was working on that for a new blog post. I was although now everything kind of died out. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I was gonna track about four or five clients as we get into this and, and and list, you know, exactly how much time I spent with them and 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 just for like a little bit of an eye opener. I thought it would be a fun thing to to, to revisit that. And so I would challenge anybody to do that same thing. I don't know the app that I have. It's called Boosted. It's on Android. It's just a free time tracking app. And then from your first interaction with somebody to the actual photo session to what you're working on afterwards, just remember to click that button and and time everything out so you can see your total time invested and then look at what you're charging somebody. And again, if you're new, 
you're just happy to be photographing somebody and and that's okay but as you get settled and as you loom long you know this is business yeah and if you are looking to get something out of it that's where you have to start making those changes and start valuing that time and then understanding that you know you're going to be placing yourself somewhere in in the market and as like i talk to people too you know and you know i don't think that um louis vuitton shutters and and they bring their uh uh, board together in a meeting and go, guys, Target's releasing a purse for twelve dollars. It's time for us to close the doors. Right? You know, they're it, you know how why would somebody buy that then? You know, it, it, so it's things that people don't quite understand. But it's the same reason why Mercedes Benz can exist when Hyundai. You know, mm-hmm. no one walks into a Mercedes Benz dealer and goes. You're selling your cars for 80000 I can get a used Hyundai down the street for ten. If you want me to buy your car, you're going to give it to me at the same price as the guy down the street. You know, there's certain situations where that would kind of be foolish to say, and nobody does, and these brands differentiate themselves. And But why? And that's the that's the million-dollar question that you have to learn, and, and, it, and it does work. Who and I think is people are always your fearful. customer? That's... Right, and I think people are always fearful at first of saying, ooh, you know, but yeah, you know what? Like, I mean, I've had I've had a rash of inquiries over the last, I don't know, week or so. And um, hey, I just want the digital images. How much for just that? And then I tell them and they're like, what? Why no, is it? Just why is it? Why is it more than the 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 album? Well, I said, because I don't like my digital images are priced that way. Um, I'd much rather you have the book. Um, and they're like, what? It's like, okay, how did this not be like a $500 session? And I said, because that's not what I do. And the ability to say no is sometimes the most empowering thing you can have as a photographer. If we're going to bring it right back to empowerment, I mean, know who your customer is. And just because you're like, oh, shoot, you know, I need some work right now doesn't mean you take the wrong job because that just leads you down the path of always taking that wrong job. So be smart about who you're who your client is. I think, I don't know if you've run into this, but I think also too, this is going to sound horrible, but I think you run into more of those issues as you l- go lower and lower and oh, lower. You run into more the, and more problems. The lower your price, the more headaches you have. It's not mo money, mo problems. It's low money, mo problems. Mo problems. It's, it's like... <laughs> People want more. Yeah. Or they, no, they, people, they, people who are willing to invest in what you do and in themselves, in our case, um, you know, they, 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 people who get it, get it. People who... We're, we're giving away a lot of good information. Yeah, I know. It's a lot of uh, hard-earned uh, stuff. Exactly. But that's, okay. that's fine. I mean, I'd rather, honestly, I'd rather help the industry stop, you know, just pricing at the bottom and and if if there were 10 photographers that listened to this that said yeah you know what maybe that isn't the right way to do this maybe i should price a little higher so i can afford to market so i can afford to attract better clients so i can stop being the person who's doing the 300 hundred dollar photo shoot with all the high res images that are all retouched that you spent hours and hours and hours retouching like it, it's start. you know it, but there are levels, there are levels yeah, and it happens it, Everything is related to the other. So if you're going to come along and suddenly you're in for a thousand dollars, like a person, you need to be that Mercedes. So your website and the content and the copywriting and the photos need to be reflective mm-hmm. of that level of business. So one thing is is intimately related to the other. So that brings us to another whole thing too. Yeah, your website is your storefront. So that needs to look like a thousand dollar plus a person website. If you just have some hand homemade kind of freebie, uh, weebly kind, you know, I don't think that's going to work. I don't think you're going to. No, your your site has to reflect you, and it has to look good. And you know, one of the other bonus pieces of uh, advice I'd give anybody is if you have a website every year, like usually in December when it quiets down for me, like after all the Christmas rush is over. Um, I usually have two to four four weeks, depending on how the weeks play out into January, and that is my time for review. So it's systems review, what subscriptions am I paying for, and then I have friends and family and other people go through my site and say, hey, you know, pretend you're going to be a customer, go through the site, subscribe to stuff, do things, tell me what you think, and report back. 
and I'll buy you dinner, you know? And do you do your own website or you have someone who does that? Uh, I do my own. I, mm-hmm. I guess I could probably have somebody else do it, but I mean, at this point it's kind of just like little tweak here and there. And it's not that hard for me. Uh, cause I have a bit of a web background. So, um, eh, I could outsource it, but to be honest, it might take me longer. Dude, it I, might I, take me longer to find someone than it would just to do it. Um, I do it myself too. And I think it, there's a pluses and minus to that because I'm someone who's constantly changing things mm-hmm. in there like all the time. And that is another whole time suck that I have to get a little bit more control of because I'm constantly updating things. Mm-hmm. Change, Ooh, this should be better over here. Ooh, this should be better over here and moving it and moving it. And it takes a long time, I think, to learn how to do yeah. web. Design. I mean, I've been using yeah. WordPress now for like eight, ten years. Oh, really? Your, I didn't think your site was a WordPress. Well, what did you think it was? <laughs> I'm curious. I don't know. Oh, I, didn't cool. think, I don't know. Usually you WordPress, you're, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I've had just WordPresses as a, as a blog, you know, in, in the past. Um, but uh, uh, no, that was not my, which was, I guess that's a, that's a kind of a I guess so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, you know, like it, for my next iteration of my website, I'd probably just hire a company to just do it. Um, because site optimization is as good as it can get on that site with that platform, with that template. So if I'm going to change over templates and themes and all that kind of stuff, um, I'll eventually have to, you know, maybe look at having somebody else do it for me as who's a professional web developer. Um, and then maybe installing some custom stuff, uh, who knows, but at the moment things are working just fine. Um, but that's kind of on the two year plan, like roughly, tw- like in a roughly 18 months from now, I start looking for someone and saying, Hey, you know what, what can we do to improve? Because you get sick of it. Like, see, I get I get tired and I realize a lot of people may just be seeing it for the first time, but in my mind, you know, I'm looking at it all the time. So I'm like, uh, it's time to refresh. Uh, I got to change this or I got to change my font here or, or so forth. Um, but I do do something that's funny. You mentioned the same thing. I will change something on my website and I will go to, to, to women that I know and say, take a look at this and, and be my focus group mm-hmm. and tell me what I did right. Well, that's, and what don't you like about that's also this? the beauty of like, uh, you know, having a Facebook community is like you can you can offer up something like you know if i said hey you know i'm if if somebody wants to uh help me out with this i'm looking for a focus group and um you know i'll give you like a 300 hundred dollar product credit that you can use towards you know buying the wall art you didn't buy or extra images or whatever and people who will help me you know will have they'll have to work for that 300 bucks but um you know at the end of the day you're getting like actual customers to do this Um, there's now there's a bonus to doing it that way with people who are already familiar with you, but also people who have never heard of you are also sometimes the better option in those cases. But sometimes I'll take like even like past clients, like they're not like super familiar with the site. They're super familiar with the experience. So like, you know, if you give, you can't just say here, go to the site and then just figure out what you like and what you don't. You have to give the, you kind of have to have an idea of what you might want them to look at. And what processes that you would want them to go through. But, um, you know, if you at least have something like it's almost like having a hypothesis and then testing your hypothesis right. rather and than just having it. Yeah, yeah, like right. you just don't want to introduce confirmation bias into them. Like you have to say, like, all right, without being too specific about what you want them to do, it's just like. I I just I want you to look at this aspect. I want you to pretend to be a brand new customer. I want you to just just things like that. And uh, those are Here's a question I want to get. I mean to cut yeah. you off. I thought you were finished. I'm sorry. Okay. I no, were, I was just going to say that's of... hugely advantageous. Now this Now, how much done. do you focus on your galleries as far as what you want them to represent. Do you ever get feedback from anybody as far as the content you put in there? Is it's it's too much this way or too conservative or right in the middle, or is that not even a thought to you? Well, the images that end up on my site, on one hand, it's really, it's really upsetting because of Facebook, because Facebook doesn't just look at your ads. It looks at the landing pages and then plus a couple pages from there. So things that are linked off to it. So sometimes I have to be careful about the stuff I put on my site because of having we'll get approved. Yeah, because Facebook might not approve of that. It, like they may disapprove an ad because of site content. So the home page isn't necessarily 
as it could be more risque. It could be more um, in line with what I shoot, but it's probably 80% of what's there. Um, I do, in some cases, dumb down some of those images um, and make them a little bit softer. Not, not to say that I shoot erotic stuff or anything, but just, you know, things like hand bras. Facebook hates that. And, you know, like, if the, like I'm not going to be offended by a nipple. It's just a nipple. Grow the F up and just, just understand it's a nipple. Um, and I could have a beautiful shot, artistically done, and there happens to be a nipple. But if Facebook sees that through one of their AI things, it, it, it gets pissed off at you and then blacklists all your ads. So you have to be careful about what you're putting on your site. And it sounds stupid because you're thinking, like, what's my site got to do with my Facebook ads? It has something to do with the ads because I used to have stuff get bounced all the time because I had a few nudes on the homepage. And... Um, once I took those off, magically, ads were Everything getting approved. Open. So it was it was it was annoying to say the least. So there's a consideration. There is definitely there. a consideration, and then further to that aspect of it, it's just like what body types do I put on? That's that's a big one to me. I want as many different eth- ethnicities as I can possibly get. I don't want cropped images. Uh, I need people's faces visible, so I will twice a year do model calls so I can get people in and I know I can use the images later. Um, But I have to have different body types too. I have to speak to all the people that I, that I photograph and they also can't be all 20 to 25. Um, If somebody is on my site, who's that age, it's just because it's like a killer image. Most of my images I'm trying to show women who are 30 plus, um, and as many different body shapes, ethnicities as possible. And that's one of the things. So it's overt. You're definitely trying to have the range oh, I'm, on there. I'm show. definitely trying to make sure that that is a big part of what I, what I portray. Because I want, I want some girl who's maybe got like, I don't know, Indian descent background. I want her to look at my site and go, oh, there's somebody like me. I see. Uh, there's somebody who's African-American and go, oh, that's me. Like somebody who's plus size that's me i i don't you know like that's that's the important part and representation matters um for a lot of people and i understand that i mean uh i want people to see themselves in on my site in in obviously it's somebody else but i want them to at least see that i that i that i welcome that um and you know what's harder is to show like you know, queer, um, gay, like you can't, you can't show that in an individual type thing. And I'm not going to call out somebody saying this person was gay. This person was queer like that. That's not my place to say on the site, but, um, you know, like I want to have as many people represented as possible. Um, because I think that's important for people to see. And do you also, and I, we may have talked about this before that I always was more safe. I kept things very You know, within those two standard deviations, I really didn't want to put things too tame or too extreme on there and figuring most people are okay. And I always wondered whether if somebody wanted to do something like worth more nudity or something like that, not seeing that on there would not get you those. Yeah, well, I I get those questions and like people will sheepishly ask me during the wardrobe consult. like, is it okay if we do like some topless Mm -hmm. or nude? And I'm like, absolutely. Um, the only reason you don't see that on the site so much is because I got to be careful with what I have on it because Facebook ads won't run if and I try to explain that. But I'm sure there's definitely a lot of stuff there. And I mean, I have galleries on the site that are kind of a little harder to find that are kink based, uh, some bodyscape nudes, um, you know, but I've also labeled the the headings like I didn't call them nudes. I called them birthday suits. So just just so I could kind of mask, so Facebook looking for keywords, yeah, like or just so, just like so that, Facebook yeah. wouldn't be as wise to it. Um, so yeah, and it it really sucks that that stupid Zuckerberg has has basically made the 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 body just like this offensive thing because there's a bunch of people out there that that have issue with this, and um, yeah, yeah, and I just it, it it drives me crazy. And I mean, if you don't want to see rule. it, don't look, please. But don't, 
Mm. <laughs> it's it's definitely yeah. frustrating. With a company like that, it's always just going to be Franks and Beans. Yeah. You know, it's going to be the lowest common denominator, and that's who they have to you know, target everything, no, everything absolutely. toward. And we're in a business that's very tough to advertise on uh, Facebook. And I'm sure like me, I can't tell you that I have countless photos that I uploaded, not approved. Um, I even went as far as one point just to like pixelate everything and just put a face and the whole body would all be uh, <laughs> just as a kind of like a, you know, pixelate everything in, 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 in the pictures. But it is, yeah. it is a, uh, a struggle. But one thing I have, I was always like super conservative. And then one thing definitely that I've changed over the past year and and talking about getting feedback from people, which is, which is important. And I would have clients come in and, and they would say to me, well, I I really want to do something wild. And I'd be like, isn't this wild enough? You know, so I was really keeping the reins on with, with people. And it, and it turned out that there were a certain amount of group that wanted to do something a little bit more uh, than I was used to doing. And um, so I know over the past to talk to some people. I, I added some more content on my website that I wouldn't typically have uh, more erotic mm-hmm. like type content or couples type content just because it seemed there was like this, I don't want to say pent up demand, but if people don't see that, they may feel that you may not accommodate that type of, uh, of, of work for them. So it was a little challenging for me to change up in, in that regard because I didn't want to go too too far, but there's been a positive feedback. I've also included that in a lot of my customer materials where I would say, you know, this may not be for everybody, but if you're into this, this, or yeah. this, it's all over. Okay. That's, that's one of the uh, things that, that's funny you mentioned that. Cause it's kind of on the hit list uh, of things to do is just like, I, I have to start, like my site is very much geared to the, um, solo woman doing this for herself. Um, right. there's like a little subsection, like kink little subsection for art nudes little subsection for couples but like i need to have that more front and center on the site Mm -hmm. so people can get to it more easily and i have to i kind of have to like sometimes what i do is i just like okay i I look at the home page i'll either print it out or i'll just kind of like scratch it down on a page like where else could i put this so that people will know that i do this and um, designing you know the problem is you're, you're designing for a phone now not a desktop. Yeah, you're, that's you're making two. That, that, right. that that's yeah. really well. I mean, everything is just like a, a like I guess a what do you call it a, a scalable um, thing nowadays. I website doesn't work. That's good. My Wix isn't super one hundred percent scalable. When you click the mobile and it involves me always going in there and tweaking. Yeah, things. see, like mine will just adaptively respond. It's responsive. That's what it is. Like so, mine will. Respond, but I mean, like you can only scroll so much. Like I used to have more portfolio images on the home page, and I, I was think it was like fifteen. And on a desktop, it looks great. On an iPad, it looks great. But on a uh, on a uh, phone, it's just like more. you'd never stop seeing pictures, and people would never get below I've that. Changed. So yeah. I've changed my galleries because yeah. Of so that. now yeah. it's just like a, a lazy load with a load more button for the phones, so that if you get past four images then it's like do you want to see more okay here you go but you have to prompt it so they would get below that which is where all the like the next step booking stuff comes from so it's uh yeah it's it designing for and testing this stuff mobile is probably one of the most underrated things people do um because i can tell you right now i am 70 30 mobile versus desktop use and I don't think anybody else is far off of that. Galleries are tough on a phone. Yeah, um, You're right, because I had to make everything side scroll and not go up and down. Uh, the photos went side to side because I had a, a whole page gallery. And then I realized the same thing you. You would go on the gallery page. It would be like you just keep scrolling. Sixty pages. Yeah. Long. I'm like, who the hell is going to go through all and of it's this? Like a, so it's I like a wall to getting to the next content, which is the stuff so that says more like, contact uh, me. Yeah, more like Instagram, where you just go from side to side, and and the photos go, you know, yeah. so you can you can slide through them, um, from um, from from left to right. Yeah. So, boy, we've been talking about a, a lot of we stuff did. here. We'll wrap this up in a in a moment or two. This is like a chock full. Yeah, this, we weren't planning anything. We, we, I thought we were just going to talk about the virus, and this went this know, went we somewhere else, and this is going to be great. Just that's all right. So this is this what is going to be but, everyone's isolation project to take what we said know, well, and do this. Well, that's funny because on my little notepad of things, it's not going to focus, was virus tasks. <laughs> I was going to ask you, now that everyone's home, or all these things that we were, were talking about here today, um, what are a few good things you think people can work on? And we can certainly 
talk about some of these things we've we've talked about today. But I, I think now you just you've got you've got a ton of opportunity to I think look at market. I'm going to be looking at marketing almost exclusively um, and just saying, OK, um, you know, it's taking some of those WPPI examples, like really hyper targeting select groups of people and developing customer profiles for very select. Like I thought I was very select when I said like, okay, you know, like just women who are interested in doing this, who are between a certain age and have this like level education and whatnot. I thought that was super targeted. I'm going next level granular. And so I'm going to be dishing ads to very few people but to very but to people I think are going to be very much into what I offer oh. and those those landing pages that they're going to hit um, are going to be designed such that there's no menu structure it's like there's a landing page you're stuck on this page so that you don't go somewhere else you can you're, copying my landing yeah pages. exactly and everybody else's right but like i used to point to blog posts and that is a huge mistake because then people can click off all the sidebar stuff and they can do all the, the the top level menus like i want them to do what i got them there for which is yeah. to then get onto either a, an, an email drip campaign or to reach out and contact me whatever the objective is but just do that schedule a consult um, I, I just I want I want people to do that. So I want to come up with some very specific ads uh, for very specific genres of photography and, and, and make, make really for them attached yeah, to your, your website. Yeah, really specific stuff. No, none of this like just broad like I'm still going to do broad awareness stuff, but I want that. That's great, except, you know if you reach the right person and you put them, it puts something right in front of them. Like, Hey, that's, that's awesome. Like, you know, when you like, everybody's got that, that one Instagram ad, they went like, Oh, I have to click this, you know, like that's what I want. You're taking it. To yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So that, that's, I think that's one of my big projects. And then, um, I think, cause I've already done my, my, uh, subscription review. Um, you know, like what, what, what things am I paying for? Do I need to be paying for them? Uh, especially when times are tight like this. Like if you've got a subscription to a service you're using infrequently, you, you might want to chop it for a little while. Um, you know, like I had an Animoto thing, which I used fairly frequently. But right now I'm like, yeah, you know what? I think that's expendable. That's 20 something dollars I can have back every month. And if I need it, I'll get it again. You can always yeah, re-add it. It's no... There's no, there's no harm in taking it off for a period of time. That's why I also would recommend people, like unless you know that service is like going to be absolutely invaluable to you, never pay for the annual thing. Just go monthly because that way when you, like if you realize there's something better or this isn't working, you're not out a bunch of money. Because um, you know, your annual subscription always seems to come up right before you do your audit and then it's like, oh crap, I've already paid for the year. Or right when it, right during a time when suddenly you could use that yeah, money for something exactly. else. You know, so just six hundred dollars missing so from just, your yeah, account. Be you're smart like, about that. And uh, I, I know in the short term it's more appealing to do the annual thing, but the in the long term uh, it's sometimes better just to to go month by month, and uh, then you can at least chop it when you need to, uh, and not be out money. Good yeah, too. I think. Um, one thing that I have been working on in my quarantine is my blogging. Hmm. And, you know, since I am a big want to bring the control back to me type person, I think it's something that people need to revisit. And because you can control everything, Instagram and Facebook and Pinterest can't stop you from putting whatever no. content you want on your own blog. And so I am more or less a very prolific writer anyway. Just Lucky one of these you. people give me 10 minutes and Lucky I can sit there. You. And I am the exact opposite. <laughs> you have no idea. And it, it just I it just comes out of, I have a whole Google Keep thing full of all things that I'm working on, topics and, and so forth. And uh, it's and actually the, uh, there was a uh, article I'm just finishing up over the past couple of days about teaching people how to rethink their blog and how in 2020, basically Google does not care. And what most photographers do is like Miss L's boudoir session, that that really gives you no value. Mm -hmm. 
uh, to your website. It's nice to show some photos, but nobody as a customer is ever going on to Google and typing in Miss L's boudoir session. You know, Google wants you to provide answers and great information mm-hmm. for questions that people may have. So it's about reframing your blogging in terms of answering questions and providing value to people around you. And then it's remarkable how, and, and blogging is one of these things too. There's no immediate result. You're going to make that great and there's going to be no change. It takes months for that to kick in. But as that does, you will slowly start finding more and 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 more people coming to your website and your website starts to build up authority, which tends to raise all of your pages in the listings. But it's work. It's work that you could tell everybody how to do it. A very tiny, teeny fraction of people are ever going to follow through just because like any other habit, it's very hard to get into to doing that, but it's one of those things that really can pay off. In, in yeah, the it front. really helps your SEO. When you start dropping in like appropriate keywords just in a kind of sneaky way, more for, so for Google, like less so for the readability of the, the, the people looking at it, um, but just like stuff they wouldn't even know. But just for me, putting in Toronto Boudoir Photographer instead of just, you know, in a relevant spot. You know, some where it yeah, fits. and then that just so when people are searching that term, you know, all of a sudden there. your your top three of of like people out there for uh, authority and uh, you know sometimes um, that ranking higher on Google is great and it, the the secret is is you don't need one of those SEO companies to do it you just need to blog write copy for your site that's very useful and that tip you just gave with Miss L session versus um, how, An how amazing like how you're know, like how Miss L prepared for her boudoir session like I, I don't know like I'm trying to rephrase it but like Nashua, right it, exactly and and just small the, like but just like those are the things people search and those are the the, the things people end up on and um, it's it's amazing how much of a benefit that is for you in the long run like just blogging pretty pictures that's you're wasting your, you're, you're not what wasting your time you're half wasting your time do. right and that's what most and not just in boot but photographers mm-hmm. in general that's all they do is blog sessions mm-hmm. and you know it's nice to put your pictures up there because again a lot of these things will get taken down anywhere else but it's not helping you. <laughs> it's true you know in in a sense that of uh, bringing traffic and that's what that and that's a whole top you can go down that wormhole with blogging and talk about mm-hmm. that for hours and how technical and and there's as many experts and bloggers as there are experts in photography trying to tell you what to do and it's hard to weed through and and understand but i think the bottom line is just write don't worry about that just write answers topical things that you think your customers may be interested in don't worry about keywords so much of it just right and over time that will just start to build your website and, and build your traffic and it may not all be customers you'll find like i find people from all over the world coming to my you know website so someone in sydney australia isn't necessarily my customer but that raising tie you know it just lifts yeah. your whole website and more and more people will it's amazing and uh how that will boost your your traffic over over time so true Good talk. Yeah, man, this was this was good. This is like there's there's some juicy stuff in there for everybody. So yeah, I'm, this is like I'm hoping this goes graduate level. I'm hoping this goes up pretty soon. And then like, well, we're all Being I'm so bored <laughs> and not doing it. Like, I could even do this today or later. Yeah, or nice. later uh, so you know, like today. yeah, this will this will be great. So it gives some people some real actionable items to to go look at, and not just not just silly stuff like meaningful long term stuff because yeah. that's you got time right now, everybody. So. Got nothing but nothing time. But time. When you're in the joint, you, you know, got nothing take but time. Netflix breaks if you got to. But you know, I can only watch so many movies. I gotta. I'm my brain is always in that working mode. Like if I'm doing something, I feel like I should always should be doing something to make my my business yeah. better. I so agree. Still but uh, everybody everybody needs that. a good Netflix break every now and again. If I knew we were going to be this deep, I would have stretched out. I would have been doing some iron, pumping some iron. Curl. I would have been like, yeah, I did all I did all my workouts before we uh, we jumped on, so I was I was good to go. You're good. See, I have and I have my all my gyms are shut down, so I'm a big jujitsu guy. 
So I go in a couple nights a week wow. to get the crap beat out of me by people that weigh like 50, 80 pounds more than me. And I'm working out and I don't look like it, but you know, so I miss that. And that's, how I guess I get out a lot of my uh, stress and, and tension is, is doing that. So I, yeah, I took I'm, the opposite route this morning. I just, I just did some yoga. So it was like, <laughs> I haven't done anything yet. So I got to stretch from lying around. I can feel how tight my legs are. My body just feels so stiff and tight from not, from not being on the go. All the time. I don't want to get too used to lying yeah, around no watching kidding. movies on a on a Netflix. But uh, um, thanks for coming hey, on. Thanks for having me. This was fun. This was a uh, good time to do. It's like powerful, dense content today. So we'll get this out over the next day or or uh, so. I don't do a lot of editing. I'm lucky I can edit pictures. Let alone yeah, edit yeah, like yeah. Uh, blogs. So what do we say? Stop, it's, upload, it's, done. It, that's it. That's the way to do it. And hi, not hiring any blog editors. Just to get out there so uh good talk yeah, man thanks for thank on. you and uh, we're doing it here and everybody just needs to uh stay safe stay busy with your uh um doing something there's plenty of things that you can do to fill your time there's a couple of things that we talked about marketing blogging working on some pictures and uh, being ready for when things calm down a little bit and i'll leave uh Trevor, did you tell you where you can find him? So, Got any uh, questions? Yeah, I guess uh, find me, follow me at uh, provocateur underscore images on Instagram. Uh, you can hit my website, provocateurimages.ca. Um, after that, like just those are the two main ones. Um, yeah, like those are the those are the fun ones. You know, hit me up with some messages if you want. If you have any questions, um, yeah, those are the two best places to contact me. Um, we have a lot of listeners yeah, I know. now. I, was I know you're doing, you're doing great. Me. Like I, I really love the fact that you've grown this, um, kind of, uh, you know, hundreds of people now download, um, uh, these episodes, who knows how exact those stats are, but you could just see more and more. Hey, and as more long as there's growth, that. that's all that matters, right? Downloads. You know, this isn't a show for everybody, just for people who like listening to other photographers. But, uh, you know, as long as they have the time, like anything else, I'll keep doing this little by little and it's fun to do and we can help some people out. That's, I think, what it's yeah, all about. We're going to get through this. Let's just keep going. Stay safe. Thanks Thank for coming you. on.